Welcome back to Anton Math, and in this video we're going to be going over the very last of our trigonometric identities. So let's go ahead and jump in. The first set of identities we have is, are the product to sum formulas, and the second set are what we call the sum to product formulas. Looks like my one halves are with my th sum to product, so we'll go ahead and just look at both of them. Now the product to sum formulas are sine u times cosine u, it's one half multiplied by an entire quantity sine of u plus v plus sine of u minus v. The product of cosine of u and cosine of v is one half of the sum of cosine of u plus v plus cosine of u minus v. And sine of u times sine of v is one half the product of cosine of u minus v minus cosine of u plus v. Now these product to sum formulas come directly from our addition formulas for sine and cosine. So first, let's go ahead and look at this first one. Maybe I won't do them all, um, but you'll get the idea of how we can find any of these formulas. Let's look at sine of u plus v plus sine of u minus v. Well, sine of u plus v, that's just sine of u cosine v plus cosine u sine v and we're adding to that sine of u minus v which is sine of u cosine v minus cosine u sine v so we see here the cosine u sine v's cancel out and we get that 2 times sine of u cosine of v because there's two of these, so they're the exactly the same thing this is equal to sine of u plus v plus sine of u minus v and so we see we just divide both sides by 2 and we get exactly our first product to sum formula. Now for the next two, if you want to prove this second formula, we just work out cosine of u plus v plus cosine u minus v. And for the third formula, we just work out cosine of u minus v minus cosine of u plus v. All right, and those are our product to sums. Now let's go ahead and take a look at these sum to products. I'm going to clean up the board real quick. Now the sum to products are really just uh, a substitution into our product to sum formulas. These formulas are basically the same thing except for I'm making this substitution. So let's say I take this first product to sum formula and I let u equal x plus y over 2 and I let v equal x minus y over 2. Well, plugging these substitutions into my first product to sum, I get that sine of x plus y over 2 times cosine of x minus y over 2 is equal to 1 half sine of u plus v. So let's take a look at u and v. u plus v is x plus y plus x minus y all over 2. So this just turns into I have, I have a cancellation. My plus y and minus y over 2 cancel and I have x over 2 plus x over 2 which is 2x over 2 which is just x. Okay. Now I have plus sine of u minus v. So if I take u and subtract v I'm going to have x over 2 minus x over 2, so they go away. And then I have y over 2 minus a negative y over 2. So that gives me 2y over 2, or simply y. And look at here. Multiplying both sides by 2 gives me sine of x plus sine of y is equal to 2 sine of x plus y over 2. cosine of x minus y over 2. And that's it. All of these 
Product to sum and sum to product formulas are proven in the exact way that we just did it. We would first prove, we prove the product to sum formulas. I'm not going to do it because uh, I don't want you to turn off the video just because I do the same thing over and over and over again. So we would do the exact same thing with the way that I said before. Once we've proven all of these, well these are just substitutions into the relevant formulas. If I want sine x minus sine y, well I just change this formula a little bit. That's sine of u plus v minus sine of v minus u. And I make the same substitution. Now here this time for v, I'm going to use x plus y over 2. And for u, I would use x minus y over 2 and it will work out the same way. The cosines here come from the cosine functions here you would expect. Cosine x plus cosine y comes from cosine u plus v plus cosine u minus v. And cosine x minus cosine y comes from this last product to sum formula. So make sure to take some time to familiarize yourself with these sum to product formulas. Okay? But now that we've proven them, I'm not going to dwell too much on where they come from. We'll go do some examples. But before we do, I just want to make one note. If you think about everything that we've done since the beginning of this course, We've proven all of these different trigonometric identities. We've proven areas of triangles. We've proven areas of circular sectors. We've proven all of this stuff. And all that we started with were some very simple things. All that we've used are, is the area of the triangle, 1 half base times height, and the Pythagorean theorem, uh, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, both of which are very quickly and easily seen just by drawing some simple geometric pictures, just like they did back in ancient Greece uh, when they were drawing everything out just in the sand. All right, so a little bit of an aside, but let's go ahead and move on and see some examples of this stuff in work. Just want to take stock of what we've achieved so far. So let's say we want to write this product sine 2x cosine 3x as a sum. Now the problem itself is pretty much just telling you what you're supposed to do, isn't it? I need to take a product and write it as a sum. So we're going to be using our product to sum formula. We only have one product to sum that deals with mixed sine times cosine. So go ahead and refer to wherever you put those formulas. Sine of 2x, cosine of 2x, sorry, cosine of 3x. From our last page, this is 1 half sine of u plus v. So here my u is 2x, my v is 3x. So this is 2x plus 3x plus sine of u minus v. So this is 2x minus 3x. Let's go ahead and simplify a little bit. This is 1 half sine of 5x plus sine of negative x. Now we've already written the product as a sum. Um, as far as what the question is asking us to do, we're done, but we do want to make it, you know, pretty apparent that we know what we're doing. We want to make it look like a sum instead of having this one half out here. So let's go ahead and write this as one half sine of 5x. And we don't really like those negatives in there either. So let's go ahead and pull that out with the odd property of sine. This is minus one half sine of positive x. So here we go. We've taken the product sine two x cosine three x, and now we've written it as a sum. All right, let's look at one more example before we finish up this section. Verify the identity sine x plus sine y over cosine x plus cosine y is equal to tangent of x plus y over two. So we see we have these sums on the top and the bottom. Here we just have a single term, so we should think to ourselves, well, maybe the sum to product formula would work here. And we're actually going to have to use a couple of them. Now taking sine x plus sine y by our formula, that's going to be 2 sine of x plus y over 2 times cosine of x minus y over 2. And now we need to use the sum to product formula for the addition of cosines. And that's 2 cosine of x plus y over 2 times cosine of x minus y over 2. 
All right, so this is our left-hand side. We see some cancellations right away. These twos cancel. These cosines cancel. They're both cosine of x minus y over 2. And we're left with sine of x plus y over 2 over cosine of x plus y over 2. And of course, this is simply tangent of x plus y over 2. All right, I hope this helps. Now the rest of the problems that we would do, that we would use these identities for, it's more of the same of what we've been doing all through chapter seven so far. Um, just anything that we can apply these to is going to be useful. Now in the next couple of sections, we're gonna deal with solving trigonometric equations. So all of the identities and all of the ideas we've used so far are gonna be helpful in terms of simplifying and factoring to a point where we can solve. Uh, so we'll work on a bunch of problems coming up and we'll see you there.